Yo, what is going on everyone? Guiding Light here back with another Dying Light 2 video. And in this one, I'll be showing you guys how to get your hands on an artifact two-handed axe called the Sign. Now this weapon is absolutely insane. It's not going to be as fast as, you know, some of your one-handed swords or some of the other weapons in the game, but this thing hits insanely hard. Now the version I got on it does not have any upgrade slots in it, which is something I found a little bit weird. Maybe someone else's version of it will end up dropping with some mod slots, so if you end up getting one, be sure to let me know down below in the comments. But either way guys, there is a specific quest which you can do in order to unlock this weapon, and it is accessible not really too long into the game. You're going to have to unlock the second island, so you know, maybe 5-6 hours into the game, really just depends how fast you run through the main story you'll be able to actually go out and free roam and collect this weapon. So all you have to do is go and clear out a specific base. This is called the Downtown Thug. So that's where it was located on the map. Now, just keep in mind, guys, when you get to this base, this is one of the biggest bases I've been across so far. Uh, if You will want to be, bring up a lot of food with you and a few weapons as well. Make sure your durability is up there because you're going to go through at least one or two of them if they don't have mods on them. And I highly suggest, honestly, putting some mods on before going here, maybe even getting some Molotovs or whatever you think you're going to need. But definitely try to bring some extra medkits with you regardless. So there's two ways you can go about this. You can go straight on into the base and just kill everybody inside. Or you can try to sneak around the back. There's a lot of different entrances that you'll be able to find on the back entrance. You can even fly in if you want. If you're that far into the story that you have the paraglider unlocked, you can actually fly into some certain areas and go about the mission in a stealth way, but that's really up to you. I tried doing it stealth a few times and there were explosive barrels that kept getting blown up by the enemies and just weird stuff going on. So I ended up just rushing straight in, taking everyone out as fast as I could. Just thought that was easier that way. Keep in mind though, guys, no matter how you go about this fight, there will be certain enemies that pop up with a horn above their head. If you see this horn, you really want to take that enemy out as fast as you can because he's going to signal an alarm and every time that alarm gets sounded, there's more and more enemies that are going to pile up. And you honestly don't really want that. You want to try to make this as smooth as possible. Now, I'm going to let the gameplay go through and show you exactly how I cleared out this base. Because honestly, it's a pretty big base. There's a lot of enemies that can show up. And so I want to show you one of the ways that you can do it. Just in case maybe you're having trouble or you're not really able to do it. So what I suggest is to try to take out as many enemies as you can with the stealth. There's going to be a bunch of different sections, so if you do it section by section, it's not so bad. But if you end up running into the other sections before eliminating the people in the section you're in, there's going to just be more and more enemies stacked up. So that's why I suggest doing it section by section. And then when you see this guy with the horn pop up, just simply take him out first. And that way the other people in the other sections don't get alerted, they don't even come at you at all. And you end up only having to deal with like maybe three people at a time instead of like five and ten. But as you can see, guys, there are some explosive barrels along the way, so be careful not to blow those up or you will actually die from those. It's really annoying and you'll have to start all over again, so just be on the lookout for those. So I'll let the rest of the gameplay play out of this time me actually beating the boss and everything, but keep in mind, guys, at the very end of the base, there's going to be a flag in which you have to put up to the top of the map, and that's how you claim the base. Before you do that, you do want to make sure you loot as much as you can. There's a bunch of secret chest rooms. I'm going to actually show you guys exactly where there's two secret chest rooms that I found on top of a bunch of loots. So I'll show you guys where all of the loot is located, and I'll also show you how I ended up eliminating all of these enemies, just because I know there's going to be a few people out there that do want to know how I was able to eliminate the enemies within the base. So it's pretty simple, guys. It's just section by section, like I was saying, and so long as you take out that guy with the horn, it's not so bad. That guy ended up getting his horn off, so I think a couple extra people came along. But so long as you're dodging the attacks and you have, you know, your stamina upgraded and your some of the uh, combat mods upgraded, you should be fine. It's not too crazy. It's not like as crazy as some of like the main bosses or anything like that. There's just a ton of individual enemies. So after taking out those two or three sections, this is going to be the last one. This is where some of the bosses are going to be. If you come across the lieutenant, I don't really suggest taking him out right away. Just take out the smaller enemies first. It's pretty simple. You can actually stealth attack a good majority of them. On top of that, just make sure to maybe even have a couple of Molotovs on you. That way, if one of the bigger guys come at you, you can just throw a Molotov at him and it'll get him off you immediately. And it'll, they'll keep you off of them for about five or ten seconds every time you throw one. But there's a lot of guys you can just eliminate with stealth here. So I suggest doing that and then just taking out the lieutenant. After taking out this final room, you will have the chance to finish the mission. But just keep in mind, guys, if you do that, you will not be able to loot the building or any of the stuff around here. So what you want to do is actually go around and loot everything first. 
I'm gonna show you guys this. There's actually two chest rooms, which I found. So the first one's right here. This is gonna have a big chest in it with a bunch of stuff. There's also gonna be a ton of supplies. If you walk around into the rooms, there's tons of backpacks filled with random loot and stuff like that. And then there's even another weapon room that you can go into. So I wanna show you guys where both of these weapon rooms are. It's up to you whether or not you wanna loot these or if you wanna just end the mission. I highly suggest honestly just going, taking the extra two or three minutes just to loot everything as I found some insane weapons higher level stuff than I was used to finding. So there's definitely some really great loot in here. So there's two chests in here, which you can loot. You will need a few lock picks. So I'm sure you guys already have them on you. If not, you should be able to even craft a couple of them pretty simply. But as you can see, I'm just getting tons and tons of supplies. We already got two purple rarity weapons. And you know, there's just a bunch of loot in here on top of the gold weapon that you're still gonna get after you finish off this mission. So that was the first chest room. If you backtrack a little bit of ways, you're actually gonna see a staircase where there's other floors. Now keep in mind, there still might be some enemies around, but if you go upstairs, you're gonna see this red staircase. If you go upstairs, I already picked the lock, but if you go into this room as well, there's a few more chests in here. Now keep in mind, you can even activate survival sense. That's gonna show you where all the loot is through the walls and show you all where all the chest rooms are and stuff like that. So be sure to be using your survival vision. Get all the loot you possibly can because there's just so much stuff in here that you're definitely not gonna to wanna to miss. And then as soon as you're ready, as soon as you think you've you know collected all the things you want to collect, that's when you want to go and you actually raise that flag up. So once you do raise the flag, it will end the mission and you will be rewarded with a ton of XP. And on top of that, you're actually going to get the sign, which is an insane artifact two-handed axe. So I'm going to show you guys some gameplay of this axe. Now, this thing's actually really nuts. Uh, I've used a few a bunch of weapons you know, so far. I'm about 50-60% of the way through the campaign. And this weapon hits insanely hard. Now there's also some gear that you can use that's gonna make it hit even harder. So as you progress even further into the story and you know you unlock more stuff, you're gonna get even better gear. This weapon's gonna continue to get better. And it honestly, it's already pretty insane. So I'm gonna go up against a horde of enemies really quickly. You saw there, that's how you get the axe. As soon as the mission's completed, you'll be getting the axe in your inventory. So very quickly, let's go ahead and test out this axe. Now, first, we're just going to go up against, you know, your common zombie enemies that come running at you. These are the typical people you're going to be fighting the most. Now, this thing will almost one hit them at the level that I'm at right now. And I don't really have all that many upgrades unlocked. And the weapon is only level three and it's just absolutely demolishing them. Now, after this, I'm going to take it to a boss fight as well. And then that's where you're going to see the real amount of strength that it has. Because to one hit the minions is one thing. But to go up against some of the bosses, like the GRE anomalies with this, you'll see just how crazy it gets. Now, you want to go into your gear and make sure that you equip gear that's actually going to make it better for two-handers. I know my chest piece gave me additional two-hander damage. There's stuff that's going to make it uh, require less energy to swing. Uh, unfortunately, I sold my, my legs and some of my other gear by accident. But... If you take a look at the gear you have, you'll notice that there's some attributes for two-handed weapons. You just want to stack up as many of those as you can. Now let's see what this thing can do up against a GRE anomaly. As you can see it's just absolutely shredding through its health. Normally this would, this fight would take you know maybe a couple of minutes, but with this, you could basically four or five hit this thing. It's absolutely nuts. Now I tried to get some heavy hits on it, which is why I ended up started missing. I wanted to see just how crazy it would be if I did a heavy attack. But for some reason, uh, maybe because it was a boss or something or how big he was, the heavy attacks really didn't seem to be connecting as hard. But either way, guys, this thing does insane damage. You're going to notice if you try to fight one of these GRE anomalies with something different, it's not going to go as easy as this is. You can believe me on that. And even afterwards, you'll see how easy it was to just take out an entire swarm of zombies that were swarming around me. So I highly recommend going out to get this thing as soon as you can. Now, I, there's a possibility that you'll be able to run the mission again online or once the story is completed and try to farm some better rolls of it, but I'm not really too sure about that. But either way, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Be sure to go out and get the two-handed axe as soon as you can because this thing is just absolutely nuts, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace.